Double O Monkey could smell Steve from here. <laughs> His tracking devices were working like a charm. Oh no, Steve's scent was drowned in a sea of similar smells. George would never be able to pick up Steve's trail. It was clear. Three senses weren't enough to track the slippery Steve. Double O Monkey would need four. <laughs> Luckily, he knew someone with a taste for tracking. <laughs> or at least a taste for treats. I hope Charky is able to follow the crumbs. Otherwise, I'll be covered in whatever Steve's making me this time. Time was running out for Double O Monkey. The recital was tonight. This had to work. Steve's trail ended here. Which room was Steve in? Huh. Oh. His tracking device. <laughs> <laughs> the sound was louder here. He could smell the backpack too. <laughs> Betsy's gonna love this. Betsy was right. Steve was making another surprise for her. Now I just have to find a box. And George had to find out what. <laughs> Double O Monkey couldn't see through the window. Maybe he could feel what it was. It felt like a jar, and it was wet. Paint? That was a weird good luck gift. Although, Betsy did love to paint. Maybe Steve had a whole set of paints for her? <laughs> it was a gift that could go really, really bad. George had to warn her. Super spies are very fast on their feet. Way to go, George! Mm, here we go again. This is for you. It's beautiful. Thank you. But why'd you make me a vase? Because it wasn't anything that could slop on you. Look, it's supposed to be you doing your solo. Uh, the paint got smudged somehow when I set it out to dry. <laughs> but I kind of like it. It makes it look like you're actually moving. <laughs> it sure was lucky you were here, George. That vase would have smashed into a zillion pieces. Uh -huh. Double O Monkey saves the day again. <laughs> <Aww. laughs> 
And then he wasn't. Sir, the drive belt snapped. We can't go if the prop don't spin. Whoa. Yes, sir. Of course. We can use the belt from an automobile. I'll get one. It looked like Duxy couldn't hope to beat that American monkey. There was no chance of winning now. But then... <laughs> the monkey tightened his rubber band one turn too many. This race wasn't over yet. No power! Without propellers, my ship will go wherever the wind blows it. Oh my! Help! Oh no! Chuck Monkey had to help, but his plane couldn't fly. Fortunately, Duxy's ship was still on the ground. He explained the emergency as they took off. But Lieutenant Doxy didn't understand. The monkey ruined his ship, and now he was about to do the same to the Doxies. I got a belt, sir. Come back. But they couldn't go back because they couldn't control the ship. If they didn't get a belt quickly, they too would blow into the Eiffel Tower. <gasps> Clothes for a belt? What a great idea! Thank you! Putting the Baron in an emergency life balloon, the clever flyers use their ship's propellers to create a wind to blow him back to the landing field. They save the Baron. But they were in last place. Still, no obstacle was too big for Chuck Monkey and Lieutenant Doxy. Maybe together they could win this race. <laughs> uh, it wasn't 1909. Huntley wasn't in a race. And his balloon was still stuck. But if it was a dream, why could he still hear his airship's propeller? The fan. It sounded a lot like a propeller. And it looked a lot like a propeller. And if it moved air, it would move things that were in the air, right? Oh. George raced back without the fishing pole because he had another idea. <laughs> and it was the same idea that Hundley just had. George aimed the fan. Huntley barked orders like a famous aviator. Aiming the wind behind the balloon, George could push it where he wanted it to go. Air conditioning is all fixed. Hundley, you're relieved from duty. You want to go to the park and fly that plane, George? <laughs> Hundley had something else he needed to do. <laughs> Won't be needing this anymore. You want it on? Okay. Kind of noisy if you want a nap. It was exactly what Hundley wanted to hear. 
because he had some unfinished business back in 1909. With the aid of a monkey, the Duxie is pulling ahead. Folks, if they win this one, people will be talking about this victory a hundred years from now. The monkey was back. Okay, George, give her a shake and let's see what it sounds like. I can tell you right now, goats don't play the accordion. Ah! Ah, ah! That's another thing goats do. They chew things, especially boxes. Goats do eat an awful lot, but if there were a goat in there, we'd hear it moving around. Ah! <gasps> huh? It moved! I heard it move! Hello, Mr. Goat! Hello! <laughs> oh, it was just a squirrel. He was probably having a play date with the goat. Go on, George, shake it. Let's see what it sounds like. Sounds like a bunch of cans of soup. Who sends cans of soup? Unless they put cans of soup in there for the goat to eat. Grown-ups send weird things. My aunt once sent me underwear for my birthday. I'd rather have soup. Ah. George could feel something inside the box. It was another clue. What it felt like. Whatever it was, it was round, and hard, and covered in stiff hair. <laughs> okay, let me. She'll just say it feels like a goat. <gasps> Holy cow! That feels like a goat! Could it be? Told you! <laughs> Goats were smelly. <laughs> But the box smelled like, well, George didn't know exactly what, but it didn't smell like goat. That does not smell like a goat. Maybe it had a bath. Grandma always makes me take a bath before I go on a trip. Could it be a very clean goat? Look, it's a delivery truck. Ah. He must be here to pick up the box. George didn't want to say goodbye to the box until he figured out what was inside. Please, don't take it yet. Oh, sorry, I've got my orders. But mister, we still haven't figured out what's inside. Yes, we have. It's a goat. Huh? George, we can't keep it. We don't even know who it's for. It's for you! We left it here this morning. Why haven't you opened it? Oh, this was from you? It's a little present to thank you for helping us with the volcanoes. Yes, I, I often wonder how other scientists manage without a monkey. <laughs> sure, go ahead, George. George couldn't wait to meet his new goat or eat soup, whichever it was. Huh? No goat. <laughs> Do you know what those are, George? George knew furry bowling balls when he saw them. <laughs> no, George, those are coconuts. So that was coconut water sloshing, not soup. And this isn't goat hair, it's coconut hair. Gee, you flew all this way just to give us coconuts? No, much more. Oh, straws. Lays? Shirts? Hey, neat! Oh, another box to open, George. What is all this? <laughs> a luau in a box! Uh-huh. 
We'd have stayed when we dropped the box off earlier, but uh, we left our ukuleles in our other lab coats. <laughs> George, we learned an important lesson today. <laughs> a box can weigh, feel, and sound like a goat, but if it doesn't smell like a goat, it's probably coconuts. <laughs> if there was one thing George was an expert at, it was making noise. George's noise machine was sure to keep the deer away. But it was keeping everyone up. Morning, George. <laughs> Thanks, George. Whew, I'm beat. We need to think of something that doesn't keep everyone awake. But first, I just need a nap. There had to be a way to save the garden. <laughs> Tree sap. George didn't like the way it made his fur feel sticky. <gasps> Maybe George could find a way to make the garden sticky. The tape was sticky. It would keep the deer out of the garden all right. Unfortunately, it kept them out, too. Oh. Well, this isn't going to work. The proper way to approach this problem is scientifically. And scientifically, I'm out of ideas. We tried to keep the deer out with a scarecrow they could see, noises they could hear, and sticky tape they could feel what's left. Hmm. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Smell. Yeah, I tried that once on my mom's garden before she got the fence. I made the stinkiest potion ever. Rotten eggs, old socks. Then I put it on my mom's garden. It kept the deer out. And my mom, too. Turns out nobody likes a garden that smells like old socks. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Deer like the way flowers taste, that's the problem. <sighs> Allie was coming back in just a few days. And George was worried there wouldn't be any garden left when she got home. <sighs> but then he remembered something the deer didn't like. <gasps> Oatmeal. <sighs> but that didn't make sense. Oatmeal was delicious. It was just oats with a little cinnamon on top. Ah! If deer didn't like the taste of cinnamon on oatmeal, maybe they wouldn't like it on flowers either. <laughs> George made a special flower protecting formula full of cinnamon. <laughs> if the deer didn't like the taste of the flowers, maybe they wouldn't eat them. At least, that's what George hoped. Oh. Ah. The next morning, George and Bill arrived early. There wasn't a single deer in sight. The garden was saved. Hooray! Ah! Not bad for a city kid. The deer had moved on and found food that didn't taste bad to them. And after just a few days,
flowers grew back. Just in time for Allie's return. <gasps> flowers! Oh, look at them, they just grow! How easy is that? <laughs> hey, look what I made in camp! A deer call. It sounds like this. <laughs> look, it works! Here they come! Yeah, I know. My turn. I got one! I got one! <laughs> oh! Whoa! I'll get it! Ow! This shoe is really small. Maybe my left foot had a growth spurt? I thought I heard a bowling ball in a snack stand. Uh, maybe it was just thunder. <gasps> oh! I found a popcorn! Something was still wrong with the shoes. Huh? Lucy and Charlie's shoes were all size 10s. Both Janice's shoes were size 6s. And Bill's shoes were both 9s. So why did they fit differently? The nines were written in different colors. Why did Mr. Berg's shoe numbers come in so many different colors? Ah. Huh? Hey, George hadn't noticed these colored signs before. There was a blue man, a red lady, and green children. They were the same colors as the shoes. Ah. Maybe the different colors meant they were different kinds of shoes. Ah. Ah. The shoe with the number in green was the smallest. Ah. Green numbers must be for children. Ah. The shoe with the red number was a little bigger. Ah. Red numbers must be for ladies. The shoes with blue numbers were the biggest of all. Blue numbers must be for men. When you match the numbers and the colors, you got two shoes that were the exact same size. Colors mean they're different kinds of shoes. <laughs> How'd you ever figure that out? You're pretty smart for a city kid. <laughs> My right shoe is too small and it won't let me walk straight. <laughs> Jimmy already has two shoes with the same color number. So what's wrong with his right shoe? George couldn't figure out what was wrong. The shoes were exactly alike. Could that be the problem? <laughs> Jimmy was wearing two left shoes. I've got two left shoes? How did I not notice that? <laughs> <laughs> George had finally sorted the shoes perfectly. Yes! Ready, George? <laughs> he even found the right size for himself. Everyone's 
scored big points. The fundraiser was a huge success. And the Bobolinks got their nesting ground.